Hi, Michael. How are you doing? It's good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for taking the time to sit and chat for a bit. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, I've I've just binged through the first three episodes of the show this morning. So cool, <laughs> awesome. So yeah, absolutely loved it. Um, oh, thank you. Such a fun series. Um, so uh, how did you get involved with it and decide to do Twisted Metal in the first place? Because it's not the most obvious game franchise to to yeah. convert into a TV show. Absolutely. I mean, I grew up with the games. I loved Twist Metal Black. That was my first entry. Uh, and I had heard that they were developing it. I heard PlayStation, there was Rumbles. And the second I heard that they were talking about it, I was like, I have to be involved. It feels like so my wheelhouse. I love comedy. I love dark comedy. I love action. I was working on Cobra Kai at the time. So I was. I just saw an opportunity to be like, oh my God, I would totally put my stamp on this. Um, Red Reese and Paul Wernick had come up with a like, you know, a, a take, <laughs> excuse me, a take. And they were looking for a showrunner to take it over. And look, at the time I was a lower level writer and I came in and I pitched like, here's how I would take what Rhett and Paul came up with. It's not just a pilot, but a series and where I saw it going forward. And I kind of got the job on the ride, on the drive from the meeting. And uh, ever since then, it came from a place of like, I love this series. I love this world. And how do we adapt it into a way that will bring new people into it and make the old fans be like, oh my God, remember that or, or bring that nostalgia, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, with a game like that, which I mean, predominantly was a sort of, from what I remember of it, was a kind of demolition derby yeah. thing. I, I mean, how, how much, I can't remember how much storyline there, there was to that game. So how much were you sort of developing from scratch and deciding which elements to take and what yeah. to leave out and that sort of stuff? So the game's structured in a way where there is no direct story in terms of like what like cinematics. Instead, you pick a character and you're getting their backstory every time you beat a level. You get a little bit more about why they're there and what's their wish and, you know, all of that. So for us, it gave us a lot of license to craft a new plot, a new like narrative outside of that. And what's <clears throat> what's also great about the games is that every game's a little bit different. So it felt like it also gave us license to like, well, this is just a new iteration. Like we're not gonna, we're not saying this is like a reboot. We're just saying this is the new version. If this was a game, this is the newest game that's coming out. It's just a slight tweak on, on, on it. So when it came to that, it was really important to make sure that the characters were what was driving the story because that is what drives the story in the games. So we wanted to craft the, the stories around that. And then from there, it was just about what, what would, who would fans want to see? Who are what, what would what are characters that we want to tease for next season? Uh, and I think it was a lot of, you know, John Doe and Quiet, played by Anthony Mackie and Stephanie Beatrice. So much of that was about their relationship and how do we find stories based on where they are in their relationship and what characters can play into that that work well with those storylines. And for me, it's just like you I want you to feel like you never know who's coming around the corner, you never know what twisted metal character is gonna pop up. And how do we adapt those backstories in a new way and, and find out what makes them tick in this new world that we've kind of created? You mentioned actually Mackie there. I mean, how, how did uh, how, how did you come on him, come to him to play John Doe? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we he was one of the very first people I thought of for this. I mean, he's so charismatic. He's so funny. He's like, mm -hmm. he's, I mean, you, he just like sparkles on screen. And I actually read an interview with him because uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was just coming out. And I saw that in an interview, it was like a, a, a cover interview. Um, he talked about that I wanted to do romantic comedy. And I was like, this is our in. Because that's what the show is. The show is very much a romantic comedy, just as much as it is an action, violent yeah. comedy. So the second I heard that, I was like, let's see if he's interested. And, you know, he read it, his produce, his his team read it, and they they got it. And, you know, I talked to Anthony and kind of talked about John Doe as a character and how he's a motor mouth, how he uses comedy and, and bad jokes to, 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 you know, compartmentalize the fact that everyone's shooting at him every day and how I saw the character and the season. And he just sort of got it and was into it. And ever since he's been an amazing collaborator, he's awesome on set. And yeah, he's just a joy to work with. Uh, and then you come to Stephanie Beatrice as uh, quiet as well. Yeah. I mean, who's, I mean, Brooklyn Nine-Nine fan or was it just sort of, <laughs> yeah. 
Me too. I mean, I was a huge Brooklyn Nine Nine fan. We, my wife and I, binged Brooklyn Nine Nine when our daughter was born uh, during the early days. And when writing the character, she was actually one of the people. I immediately thought of her. She was definitely a like I was writing to that character a little bit, or writing to that actress. And what I love about Stephanie is how expressive she is. She's so funny, and especially in Brooklyn Nine Nine, she does so much with very few words. And She's just, she's just great. And knowing how funny she is in her range, because she's done a ton of drama and comedy and music. She's with musicals, obviously, with Encanto. Um, it just felt like an awesome opportunity to, to, to let her, to give her, to just play in this world. And I knew she wanted to do action, too. Um, so she's she's awesome. We, we really bonded over the show. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're great on screen together. They're, yeah. It's just such a wonderful <clears throat> relationship. Um just coming on to to the the sound for this, I know you brought uh, some of the Cobra Kai guys over. I've actually yes. interviewed Phil uh, Phil McGowan. Uh, oh, back cool! Twenty twenty one. Um, I, I actually interviewed James, interviewed James as well back in twenty nineteen. So. Amazing! Oh, funny. Yeah, James Austin's uh, awesome. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you brought those guys over. I mean, when it comes to sort of creating the music, which has got this. Yeah, you know, really interesting kind of retro vibe to it, and then you've got the the sound of the cars as well. How, yeah. how did you come to a lot of that sort of stuff? I mean, so much of it came from the place of our apocalypse happening in two thousand and two. I mean, we jokingly call it Y two K two, and <laughs> so much of it is about that era being frozen in time. So when it came to the composers, uh, Zach and Leo, it was so much about like what is the vibe that we can capture? And they they were looking at like that, that shoegazer music, that sort of indie, the like the, the, a little bit of the, um, not techno, but like electronic music that was in that era as well. And really trying to just bring the nostalgia. When it came to sound with James, um, it was like, what's fun, what's big. And we actually worked with PlayStation to get assets from the games <laughs> and either worked them into the show or found newer ways to do that same sound. And like, I know you're only on episode three, but there are some missiles later in the season that when you hear it, if you played the game and you remember that special, it'll like bring you back. So so much of it was just about like recapturing the nostalgia. That's also some, why we went with some of the music choices was I wanted, it's not, I didn't just want to adapt the, the stories of the games or the backstories of the games. I wanted to adapt the feeling of the game when you were playing it in your room that joy you felt when you were like destroying your friends or destroying the other characters. And what music were you playing, you know, on your boom box or what movie did you just go see? And now you're talking about it with your friends while you're playing. Like I wanted to just kind of capture the culture of that era, just as much as I wanted to capture the feeling of the game. Yeah. And um, coming across from Cobra Kai, which is a quite a stunt led, series yeah. and then you come into this which is also quite a stunt-led series although very different types of stunts so <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. uh, was there any crossover in the stunt guys there or was it um so no crossover with the stunt team i think some stunt men or women may have been in both shows but right. it was a totally new team um uh i learned what i learned about on cobra kai was you, when you're writing action and you're doing stunts it needs to come from character. What are the characters dealing with? That needs to push the action more than anything. And that was what I brought into the show. And that's the thing that no matter what kind of action it is, that's going to be the most important thing. It's just bigger. Now you're just dealing with cars and bullets yeah. and, and missiles. So, uh, so it was definitely a challenge, but it always came from a place of what are these characters dealing with? What are we trying to convey? Is this another day in the office, like in the mall sequence? Or is this you know, about getting revenge like sequences later that I don't want to spoil for you. Yeah. Um, it, and, and for what's so fun too is about just capturing the chaos of it. Yeah. Um, it, it's been a really awesome uh, show from the, the three episodes I've seen. I can't wait to Thank watch you. the rest of it. Uh, it. It's such, such fun. I'm sure the UK audience is going to love it when it drops out. Uh, here. So, um, I'm so yeah, happy to I, hear that. I, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of it. Uh, good luck with it. You're, you're back for a second season as well, aren't you? We are back for a second season. I'm actually in the writer's room right now. Uh, well, not right right now, but, you know, holistically right now. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's, if you thought season one was great, season two is pretty bonkers. We're, we're pretty, we're upping the game a little bit, so to speak. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. Can't wait. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time. It's great. My <laughs> pleasure. You. It was so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks.